So, Dark Side CFS. What's all that about then? Well, it's some things that we can do with CFS that may be a little bit unconventional. The CFS purists will surely say these things shouldn't be done. But if you don't care what they say, then come join me on the dark side. <laughs> It is useless to resist. If you only knew the power of the dark side, Obi-Wan never told you what you can do with ZFS. He told me enough! He told me that's impossible! No, it is possible. Let me show you what we can do with ZFS, and we can rule the server as father and son. Come with me. It is the only way. Oh! Okay, so before we start, these dark side videos are aimed at the more advanced user, and all that we'll be doing will involve working in the command line. And this video will work for any Linux users out there who are using OpenZFS on their system. I'll be doing this on Unraid, but if you're not using Unraid, then you can still follow along with this video anyway. Now as well I just want to say that when I make a video I'm not necessarily recommending what I'm showing is the best way for you to do things. It may be for some people but also it may be not for others. And of these dark side videos this is especially true. That is it's up to you to decide whether you want to do it or not. The purpose of these videos is just to show you what's possible to be done. So just giving you another tool to use in your toolbox should you need to ever use it. Okay, so with that kind of disclaimer out of the way, let's move on to the good bits. So in this video, part one of Darkside ZFS, we're going to be looking at using mixed size hard drives in a Z pool and how to use all of the available space of the hard drives and so therefore not waste any space of the larger hard drives in the pool. So let me show you what I mean. On this server, I've got these four hard drives here, two eight terabyte and two four terabyte hard drives. So let's see the problems that happen when we try and make a RAID Z1 pool from these mixed size hard drives. So the first thing I'm going to do is to find out the disk IDs of these drives here by typing ls space forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash by hyphen id. Okay, so we've got these two Toshiba drives here and these two HDST drives here. So these are my IDs here. So I'm going to copy them and pop them into a text file. Okay, so now I'm going to create a RAID Z1 pool with these drives. So I'm going to type zpool create hyphen m forward slash galactica. This is setting my mount point. And then I'm going to name the pool galactica and RAID Z1. But then I need to pop each of these disk IDs in. So the first disk and the second disk, third, and finally the fourth. Now when I hit enter, it's going to fail. Basically saying that it contains disks of different sizes and we should use the F flag to force that to override. So let's run the same command again, but with the F flag and we can see the pools being created. So let's type Z pool status and we can see the four disks are online. But what is the actual usable space available in this pool? And so to see the usable space, I'm going to type ZFS space list space hyphen O space and then the word space then another space and then the name of the pool okay so it's telling me i've only got 10.2 terabytes available and that's because even though two of the drives are eight terabyte here it's only going to use four terabytes of each drive because the smallest drive is only four terabytes so i get the same space as if i'd use four four terabyte drives in this pool so there is a way around this using partitions now, I know what you might say, oh no, don't use partitions in ZFS. Well, take a look at this. Creating the Z pool, by default, it's already created partitions. So natively, OpenZFS on Linux, when you create a Z pool, will create partitions on those disks. So I'm just going to delete this Z pool now. And to do that, I'm going to use Z pool, destroy, and then the name of the pool. Okay, so that's the Z pool deleted. I also want to wipe each of these disks clean now. And to do that, I'm going to type wipe fs 
space hyphen a space and then the location of the disk so forward slash dev forward slash disk forward slash buy hyphen id and then forward slash and then let's bring up my disk ids again and so i'll wipe the first disk and the second disk oops okay there i didn't put in the whole disk id okay that's better and the third disk and the last disk okay so we can see there's no partitions here now so how are we going to use all of the space of all of these disks well let me show you so here are the disks one two three and four the first two being four terabyte and the second two eight terabyte so when i just made the z pool from the mixed size drives in the traditional way a moment ago because the smallest disk in the pool is four terabytes it treats each disk as if it's only four terabytes in size and that's why the total usable size of the pool was 10.2 terabytes so basically there's four terabytes on each of those eight terabyte disks that are just being wasted so what we can do is put a four terabyte partition on each of the two four terabyte drives and two four terabyte partitions on each of the eight terabyte drives so this can allow us to have two pools across these disks or even one pool with two different vdevs you just have to make sure that you don't add two partitions from the same disk to the same vdev okay so there's the theory so now let's go and do it in practice okay so what we're going to do is firstly make sure all of these disks are gpt disks and then we're going to create a four terabyte partition on each one of these drives after which on the eight terabyte drives we'll create a second four terabyte partition so let's open the terminal window and get that done so first we'll make sure the disks are gpt and to do that i'm going to type parted and then the location of the disk let's bring up our text window again with the ids of the disks in and so there's the first disk and a space and then mk label space g p t and let's hit enter to do the first disk and now i'm just going to do the same for these other three okay so that's those disks done so now let's create the partitions so again i'm going to use parted so i'm going to type parted space and then the location of the disk then a space and then mk part space and then i need to name the partition i'm going to call it zfs1 space and then the start of the partition 0% and the end 4000 GB which is obviously 4 terabytes okay so with that done I'm going to hit enter and we can see that partition has been created so I'm going to do the same for the other three disks now okay so now each of these four drives I've got a 4 terabyte partition so now on the 8 terabyte drives I'm going to add a second 4 terabyte partition so let's do that now so on the first eight terabyte drive here i'm going to change this to the start to be 4000 gb and the end to be 8000 gb and i'm going to do the same for the second eight terabyte drive 4000 gb and end 8000 gb okay so let's have a look at the disks now okay so the eight terabyte drives have got two four terabyte partitions and the fours have got one so now i'm going to create the first z pool using the first partition of the eights and the only partition of the fours okay so let's go back to the terminal window and clear this okay so now i'm going to list the disk ids again and now here are the disks with their partitions so i'm going to copy that and put that instead into my text editor here so now we can create the z pool with the first partition on each disk okay so let's type z pool create hyphen m and for the mount point i'm going to use galactica and the pool name the same and using these four disks i'm going to choose raid z1 and now i need to just tell zfs which partitions i'm using for the z pool so the first disk and the second and the third and fourth and again i'm going to need the hyphen f flag at the end and click enter okay so there's the first z pool created so let's type z pool status and there we have the first z pool and let's see how much space we got and just the same as we did before 
But now we've got these two extra partitions we can do something else with. Now I could use those partitions for a different file system if I wanted to. But I'm going to create another mirrored C pool on these two partitions. So let's do that. So I'm going to type Z pool create space hyphen M and the mount point this time I'm going to call Pegasus and the pool name the same. And this is going to be a mirror and I'm going to use the first second partition and the second second partition. Again we need the hyphen F flag at the end and hit enter. And now let's type Z pool status. And there we have the two pools and the free space on the first pool and the second pool. So basically by setting up our Z pool this way with the partitions we've managed to gain another 3.51 terabytes of space. Okay so it seems like it's a good idea to use this when you've got mixed size drives. How about using partitions when you've got four drives all the same size? So let's quickly take a look at that now. Okay, so back on my test server now. I've got four four terabyte disks. On each one, I've split them into two partitions. The first partition is three terabytes and the second partition is one terabyte. So what I've done with all of the first partitions, the three terabyte ones, is I've made a one disk of redundancy RAID C1 pool. And so this is just good for my general data and I've got a little bit of redundancy. But for really important data, I'd rather have two disks worth of redundancy. And so on the smaller one terabyte partitions, I've made a RAID C2 pool. So let's open the terminal window and run Z pool status and take a look. We can see here are the two pools. The first one made up of the first partition and the second of the second. So this first pool here has got one disk of redundancy. And the second pool here has got two disks of redundancy. Now, yes, I could have just made one Z pool of RAID C2, but then I wouldn't have the amount of space that I do from having these two pools on the same disks. So let's quickly have a look at the space on each pool. The first pool having 7.68 terabytes, and the second pool having 1.7 terabytes. So overall, with the two pools added together, yes, I don't have as much free space as I would if it was all RAID C1, but I have more free space than if it was all RAID Z2. So you may be wondering just what's the performance like having two pools across one lot of disks. Now, so long as I'm not reading or writing to both pools at the same time, the performance is absolutely the same as if there was just one pool across that same set of disks. So I think myself using partitions in ZFS is definitely a useful tool to have. And when using them, our setups can be much more flexible than if we chose not to. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just showing you that it can be done. Well, guys, well, that wraps things up for the first part of Darkside ZFS. And I really hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. And if you did, I really appreciate you hitting the like button and sharing the video with anyone else who you think might like it too. Now, to everyone who supports me on this channel, thank you so much, guys, for all of your support. I really do appreciate it. And if you would like to join these great bunch of people and help support the channel too, then please see the links in the description below. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go now. But I hope you guys have a great day, and may the Force be with you, always.